Hello everyone, it's Maria here from Pebbly Rose Paper Crafting and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to welcome you and thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate every single person that views or makes comments or likes my channel. So thank you all so much for your support. It really means the world to me. So today we're going to do a project using the brick and mortar 3D embossing folder, the Daisy Lane stamp set. We're going to use the larger um, flower image and this fern uh, leaf looking one and we're going to use the daisy punch which is the large one uh, what we what I did last week was a video using this gorgeous card and I thought it makes a really cute like you know like a gift card and um, I made a matching envelope using my envelope punch board and I used the three inch by six inch card size on the envelope punch, envelope punch board and then I did it according to the instructions of how you're supposed to do it and you will see that this card fits perfectly inside that and I thought it would be fun to make a box uh, that houses both the card and the envelope and you can um, so this is the prototype so you can then use this as a gift set as a gift box so you put the envelope in now I'm going to let you know that this envelope is a very snug fit and fits exactly inside so there's no room to move and the card so you can fit now this is a one inch size so you can fit at least I'd say two or th uh, three cards all together and three envelopes um, you could maybe squish in a bit more, but I'd say that would be the maximum because you have these little faceted gems uh, that, you know, take up a bit of room. So this is what the box will look like. I always use copy paper. Now, I had made this video before and I had a bit of, I made a bit of a boo-boo. I liked to use the blueberry bushel cardstock. This should measure eight and a quarter inches by nine and a half. When I cut this, I made a big mistake and I did eight and a half by nine and a quarter. So I was a quarter of an inch short. So I kind of panicked and then I made a video using the same box but in granny apple green. But I don't really like the way it looks with this. <laughs> um, but that's what the, the box will look like. So if you want to see it with cardboard, it really does fit snugly in there and then that fits on top and it's it sits beautifully so you'll see what will happen in the end but I have a solution here that will work out very well for those who are like me and they made a mistake so here's how we're going to fix it we're going to um, score so I already I already started scoring this so on the eight and a half inch side so pretend that this is on the eight and a quarter inch side sorry pretend this is proper okay you score at one and then at seven and uh, and a quarter okay so you're supposed to turn it onto the nine inch side but as you can see I'm a quarter of an inch short so I'm going to score it as per usual so on the nine and a half inch side, so ignore that that's off, you'll score it at one, four and a quarter, five and a quarter, sorry, I had to make sure that my measurements were correct, five and a quarter, okay, and then at eight and a half. And as you can see, this is short. So the solution to that problem is we're actually going to cut a panel of um, blueberry bushel and it's going to be one inch by six and a quarter. So I'll just grab my blueberry bushel cardstock. This cardstock here that I have is not the right size so just bear with me and I'll be back so I've got another piece of blueberry bushel so I'm going to grab my trimmer and I'm going to cut it at one inch so make sure it's exact one inch oh that moved hold it down okay so that's 
one inch by it says six and a quarter and I've just realized now as well that this trimmer is a bit too small for this so bear with me and I'll grab my larger trimmer and I'm going to trim off to six and a quarter okay so what I have done is I've now trimmed it down to one inch by six and a quarter because that will then fit exactly over this area okay so what we're going to do is we're going to fold and burnish and I'll show you when that happens that you can rescue your cardstock so I'll just fold and burnish so that's a quarter of an inch short so just fold and burnish all of the score lines Then we'll do that. So we fold and burnished the score lines. Then we're going to cut into the uh, up to the one inch mark there. So we're going to cut into that and we're going to also mitre the flaps in because that will help with uh, when you put this together it won't look terrible and they have won't have bits sticking out I'm just leaving the flap as is there okay because it's already short so all I'm doing is just mitering in the rest there so this is what happens this is what you can do when you have stuffed it up like I have and done a little bit off so put it up there from the outside you can't tell so that's what will be the genius part of this all right now with this flap here I'm just going to put it on here then I'm going to add my one inch so as you can see this matches there exactly I'm going to put glue right on the this part here so I put the flaps in so we don't mix it up so I'm going to put glue So you just got to measure according to your box okay so this is showing you my stuff up so if this happens to you you know how to fix it <laughs> so I'm going to now just attach on my pretend proper uh, measurements here okay I hope what I'm saying makes sense sometimes I don't make sense so just as a warning so now on the inside it looks terrible however there's your flap there and there so let's just put this box together so I'm going to put some glue here and here and we will make this the bottom of the card I mean the box so I'll just put that up there like that and like that. Actually, I should have just left it without mitering it in, eh? And then we'll put these flaps in. Now for this it has like a gap there. So what you can do is you can get a little strip 
of cardstock. Just, oh, I'll make sure it's in there like that. Just hold it in. All right. So now what we will do as well is we will add some glue on these flaps there and there and then we'll go over the top oh. it's not my day <laughs> it really isn't my day oh this is terrible did the wrong thing I should have folded them in and then go like that so let's just pretend I did it properly so we go in like this on this flap and this flap so it should be on the inside not on the outside like I just did so go like that and like that So it now fits perfectly. Okay, and to make it easy for us to be able to lift the lid, I'm just going to get my one inch circle punch and I'll just go in the middle here and I'll just, you know, put in a thumb notch. Just a tiny one. And so now the box is complete. So you can then, see as you can see I had put in an extra flap. So if that ever happens you can fix it. So I'll just put in my envelope and my card in there and it fits absolutely perfectly. And so now what we'll do next is we'll get a piece of Whisper White cardstock. So bear with me and I'll bring that over. So I've got a piece of some scrap whisper white cardstock as well so with the three by six inch uh, panel that goes on top of this what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp and I'm going to use granny apple green and I'm going to stamp the ferns now I'm just going to get an idea of where I'd like to stamp it so I'm just going to put my stamp here on top so I can get a rough idea and then do another one there. Alright, so I'm going to stamp like that and then like that. Okay, so it kind of looks like it's even on either side. Then I'm going to grab my pineapple punch and the large daisy image and I'm going to stamp that twice and I always align my stamps according to how this the punch is like that so then that way when I punch it out it's really easy so there's one and then there's the two okay perfection that it clean then I'll grab my punch and I'm going to punch them out so I'll make sure it's lined up next one just get rid of that all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my glue 
and I'll put this one down the bottom and then I'm going to put this one over the top so that the image is staggered and that way you have like a full looking flower like that just beautiful then I'm going to grab my clear faceted gems I'm going to get the largest one and I'll just pop that over the top like that then with this image here with this here I think that moved mm -hmm. Oops. luckily it's still wet and it gives you room to move if you ever make a mistake I like that all right so now with this now that I've stamped it I'm going to grab my uh, embossing folder which is the 3d embossing folder now, the Stampin' Up! 3D new embossing folders are very different to our previous ones. So, the sandwich in your Big Shot has changed. Alright, so I'll show you what I mean. So, I'm just going to line up my piece of cardstock here into the brick wall and uh, bricks and brick and mortar in 3D embossing folder. Okay, I'll grab my sandwich. Now, in the past, if it was a 3D folder, you just put your 3D folder there and this and put that through the embossing folder. However, it doesn't work because with these folders, they're not as thick as the Sizzix ones that were previously made for Stampin' Up! So, what I'm using is the grey embossing mat that you probably bought with your last, uh, last year's um, annual catalogue and you use the thicker grey uh, rubber mat, silicon mat. In this case I can use this to have the right thickness for this 3D embossing folder to work. Now Stampin' Up! is releasing, has released already, a 3D embossing folder which, you, uh, sorry, em embossing plate which is blue and you can find that through my online store at peppleyrose.stampinup.net and you can use that with your 3D embossing folder. So I'm just going to run this through my Big Shot and it does move underneath, so just as a warning, but it does the job, okay? So I'll take that away and you will see it works. So now you shall see that this is now complete now, and it works very well. I'm yet to get that uh, plate but I will get it soon with my next order. Alright so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my glue and I'll just pop this down. So this is three inches by six. And then I'm going to grab my flower, stick some glue down the bottom, just in the middle. And then this will go right in the middle, like so. So this is a great idea that you can use and you can change up the embossing folders, you can change up the images, the colours, everything and it fits really well with this card. Now if you want to send this card through the mail, okay, in Australia, this fits perfectly inside a C6 envelope. Use that for your mailing um, in, the, in the letter box. It, through the post office because they will charge you a funny rate for this style so just be warned so you, you can use a regular c6 envelope or you can make your own envelope using the envelope punch board and it fits perfectly inside this so i hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and i hope you like this box i think it's a wonderful box and you can use this not only for cards but also for other things too this, this is a good size so it's one inch deep and I hope you like the tip of fixing the panels here if you make a mistake like I cut it an inch a quarter of an inch short so I hope you enjoyed this tip and to rescue your box <laughs> so let me know which one of these you prefer actually I prefer the blueberry bushel but let me know which of these two you prefer and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's tips and 
my tutorial. If you have any questions, just please don't hesitate to let me know and just leave me a comment below or you can contact me through my online store at pepperlyrose.stampinup.net. The Daisy Lane stamp set is beautiful. You can purchase that through my online store as well as the 3D embossing folder and the punch. Take care everyone. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you again next time. Bye.